from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and kneel to the earth. God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sins of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with song. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all God. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to hear His voice. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before His presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures. Age to age. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated.
foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful to the promise. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The third thing <laughs> is from Matthew. Jesus said, You have heard it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And so what Jesus is saying is the Lord looks at these people as his children too. And so that's why we should do our best to try to love them. And it's really hard to do that. Um, our country was forged um, in, in time of war with enemy, right? So uh, tomorrow, 246 years ago tomorrow, uh, the founding fathers adopted the Declaration of Independence. Well, they'd already been fighting for a year. Lexington and Concord was, was long over. And the war was in full swing. And the British were the enemy. And the Hessian mercenaries were the enemy, right? But also, there were political enemies within, within the group trying to um, forge this document and forge our country was not an easy thing to do. And I know um, that some of our brothers and sisters in Christ are conflicted about this time and um, the idea that... Um, you know, we, we said that all men are created equal and yet held slaves, and that women weren't included. Um, but within the context of the time, that's the way the world was. And without the deeds of these men who played, pledged their very lives, their property, and their honor in order to move ahead, um, these, these were major revolutionary things. This has never been tried before. This grand experiment of people ruling themselves. Uh, the English had kind of halfway done it um, with a parliament, but they still had a king, and we were the first ones to strike out and do this. And it was a major, major thing. And we've continued since then to try to make that goal of all people being equal uh, a reality. And we continue day to day. But even among those people who are trying to compromise um, as an example, Jefferson and John Adams were political adversaries. What one might say that in today's world, they would be political enemies. They had very different ideas about what the nation should look like. John Adams wanted a strong central government. Um, Thomas Jefferson wanted a weak central government, and most of the power being given to the states, right? So they were, they were enemies. But yet, every day, almost, virtually every day, they wrote to each other. There's a long series of writings between Adams and Jefferson. And they wrote about everything from horticulture and their gardens, to marriage, to politics, to foreign affairs. So they were political enemies, but they loved each other all the way through their lives. I'll give you a little example, sort of light and mood. When um, I served, many of you know, I served a couple um, terms as the uh, Republican Party chair in Lewis County. And at the time, the Democratic Party chairman was, was a guy named Sambo Johnson. Most of you knew Sambo, or a lot of people knew Sambo. And Sambo and I, you know, our goals were, my goal was to deliver as many votes for Republican candidates for office as I could. And Sambo's was to do the same thing for Democrats. But you know what? We were fast friends. We were very good friends. And that was in the day when politically people could disagree and go hammer and talk to each other on the issues of the day and be friends in the evening. And um, so the story is, um, every, every night before an election, so Monday night, picture Monday night in November right before the election, got to put up signs at every polling place in the county. So he and I both had all these volunteers we were going to meet at the particular places where we meet and do our little conspiring and figure out who was going to go where and put up what. And like him, I turned around and looked behind me and there wasn't anybody standing there. So I put up put 200 some miles on my truck those nights and I put up all the signs and all the polling places in Louisiana. County. Sambo was doing the same. So we met up down at Lake Hanna Rescue, which is not quite Virginia Beach, but I think you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> we meet up at Lake Ann Rescue. I'm putting up signs for whoever, it doesn't matter, I don't even remember. And he comes roaring in. Um, I was in my truck with my Labrador. He was in his station wagon with his dog. He pulls in, uh, you know, throwing gravel everywhere. He gets out of that old station wagon, most of you probably remember, and has that cigar in his hand. And so I looked at him and I said, you know, Sambo, we could save a lot of effort tonight. I'll give you half my signs. You give me half. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to go up anyway. 
<laughs> and the only difference is going to be who's going to put his signs in front of the other guys. <laughs> so let's split them all up and we'll get all the polling places and half the time we'll be home in bed and nobody will be any the wise. And Sambo, you know, Sambo had all the stuff. So Sambo said, you know, John, I, I, my, my, I might almost do that, but I'm afraid somebody might see me. <laughs> so we followed each other around all, all the way through the town. Sam and I were very good friends and we loved each other, despite being political enemies, if you will. Looking at the landscape today, something's changed. You know, it seems to be a lot more enmity, acrimony, an unwillingness to discuss issues and a seeming need to hang the issues and opinions around someone's neck as a personal matter and no longer be able to be friends and love one another beyond politics. And I don't want to wax too much on politics. I know that besides talking about money during the pledge drive, the thing that Episcopalians take the most is having a conversation about politics. I'm aware of that, especially from up here. So, um, but this idea as we stand here on almost on the eve of the 4th of July, this idea that these men were willing to commit their lives, their fortunes, and their honor to a cause based largely on the ideals of John Locke and the idea of natural rights, liberty, and the fact that the government, if it doesn't respond to the people, can be replaced. is an important thing. Um, More about Jefferson and uh, more about Jefferson and Adams that you may or may not know. So they're bitter political rivals. I mean, and I'm not sure if they're good social media and the internet. I'm not sure we would have ever had a Declaration of Independence or a Nation. But in that day, they could be bitter rivals, arguing sometimes sort of mediated by Franklin and others um, to fire down, to simmer down the rhetoric to get a document that everybody would adopt. But they were lifelong friends. Now, when Adams was due to leave the presidency, Jefferson replaced him, third president. Well, <clears throat> the turnover back then occurred at a slightly different time because it took a lot of time to count votes and get everybody where they needed. So March, March 1, I believe it was, Thomas Jefferson was due to be inaugurated as the president. And on January 1st, John Adams appointed John Marshall, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Jefferson despised Marshall, hated Marshall. Marshall, John Marshall from up in Salem, now Marshall in Falkir County, was the Supreme Court Justice who was responsible for establishing the idea of judicial review. This idea that the Supreme Court was going to take a look at the laws that were passed and they were going to rule on whether or not they fit with the intent of the Constitution. That all started with John Marshall. Jefferson was not in favor of a strong judiciary. Jefferson absolutely despised Marshall, who would be, saw, who would be thought of as sort of an autocratic tyrant. So here's this, this friend of his whom he loves. John Adams, who sticks a knife in his back in the 11th hour and appoints John Marshall as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. There's a lot of enmity about this, there's a lot of problems going on. So fast forward to 1826, July 4th, 1826. Most everybody's heard this story, if you haven't, and this is new to you. John Adams lies on his deathbed. Thomas Jefferson lies on his deathbed. Friends who like love each other and have no better political enemies. Jefferson's last words are lost to us. Sometime before he died, he told the doctor that's no more. John Adams dies, his dying words are at least Jefferson lived. Unbeknown to him, Jefferson had died five hours earlier at Montreal. Both of them died on July 4th, 1827. Pretty impressive stuff. Pretty interesting. Um, so we have 246 years of self-rule, 
trying to reach toward an ideal where all the people in, in this country are created equal and have equal rights and protections under the law. We continue that evolution every day. Um, I'm going to give you three things to help you um, sort of, because uh, they always, always say if you're going to gripe about a problem or something, you're going to gripe about a social media, whatever it is, y'all offer a solution, right? And I grew up in that sort of environment. So I'm going to give you three ways to help you love your enemy, whoever that might be. First of all, <clears throat> to acknowledge something is not to agree with it. You understand what I'm saying? So if you acknowledge someone else's thoughts, ideas, or opinions, that doesn't mean you agree with it. It just means you say, I hear you. Okay. Now we can have a conversation. I understand. You're letting them know that you understand and you've heard what they said. You're not saying you agree. So it doesn't cost any extra to do that. But it buys you common ground with somebody and allows you to have a civil conversation about whatever it is that you might be squabbling about. Number two, it doesn't cost anything to apologize. Now again, I've got to be a master of this. I can manage a lot of salespeople and living through marriage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to agree. You don't have to admit fault. You can say, Tom, I'm really sorry that you took offense at what I had to say today. I'm sorry that that bothered me. Right? Now, I'm not saying Tom's not still kind of goofball. I'm just kidding. I mean, I'll pick you out of there. But it doesn't cost any extra to apologize. And again, it helps you to love your enemy. And finally, I, I have a prayer here that was given to me by Mom Ann. I don't know if she knew she's watching on the internet. I'm Mom Ann, if you um, I went through a difficult time at one point when she was a priest. Um, and I, I, I felt betrayed by someone. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. And what I found was that the anger and the angst about the situation was making my life miserable because I was holding on to this feeling. And you know, um, it's kind of like when you have this problem and you say, Lord, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know what to do here. And you turn it over to God, all of a sudden, you can think about eating that elephant. You know how you eat an elephant, right? One bite at a time. <laughs> and you can think about doing that because that load is off of you. And I had to do the same thing with love. For the, uh, the person that, that hurt me. So she gave me this, I think she gave it out to the congregation, put it in the newsletter later. But anyway, the prayer goes, and this is the third thing for you to help. It says, Lord, I forgive John, whoever, President, whoever. Lord, I give you permission to take the judgment and bitterness out of my heart. I do not want this to stay in my heart. I surrender it to you, and I ask you in your mercy to remove it. Heal me where I've been wounded. Forgive me where I've sinned in this. I choose not to blame or hold these actions of John against him. I hereby surrender my right to be paid back for my loss by this one who has sinned against me. And so doing, I declare my trust in you alone as the righteous judge. Bring forth a different fruit in my heart, one rooted in your forgiveness and love. Lord, in your mercy, bless John in every way. I pray that I have prayed with the heart of Jesus. So I can you know, send this to anybody that wants it, but I found it's very helpful to uh, bring me back to a position of love. And as I say, I think love for an enemy takes a tremendous amount of discipline, but it also takes the support and love of Christ in your life to be able to do that, because you can't do it on your own. I mean, how, how, did, how does somebody love someone who's killed their child? Or I, mean, I don't know. You, just, you have to have Jesus help you do it. Um, so, do you want me in a quick prayer? If you don't mind, let's pray. Lord, please bless our country and 
all who are here and who hear to be here. Please help us to be mindful that most of the things that make us enemies are part of your plan in small and degree. Help us to love those who we might consider as enemies with your support and help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand and join me in the cause of the truth? I believe in God. Father, 
You have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose <clears throat> through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I direct you to the intercessions at the top of the next page in your bulletin. We ask your prayers for George, Betty, Christine, Susan, Richard, Shirley, Nancy, Joan, Faze, Ann, Gary, Robert, Jason, and for Santi, Lola, Jim, Karen, and Anita. For those in military service, especially Zachary, Kelsey, Katie, Terry, Holly Ann, Nicholas, and John. We also pray for the General Convention of the Episcopal Church, and we pray for the departed, especially Wayne Satchel and Bishop Peter Lee. We also ask your blessings on the birthdays and, thanks and anniversaries this week, John Agee, Michael Cole Harvey, Bill and Paul Trower, Lee and Jan Downey, Amy Schick, Jim Kogel, Earl and Ann Lou Flynn, and Jeremy Harvey. Are there others? <coughs> Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty oh my God, God, Father of all mercies, we are unworthy servants. We give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Please join us in the parish hall after the service for a <coughs> coffee hour to celebrate the fourth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing together hymn number 717.
up.